was at the Cannes Film Festival. This was the buzz title of the festival. Um, you are currently at the New York Film Festival and movies releasing this film very, very shortly. Uh, you are repping Argentina for the best international film category. The film gods are extra nice to you. So just congratulations on, on all of that. Um, I imagine that it must have been fun um, on one aspect to hear. Were you aware of the buzz on the Quasette? Because people were talking about it. People were saying, hey, you got to see this film. Were you aware that this was happening? Not so much. I mean... Um... What we received was uh, critics from everywhere, uh, and and very positive, and from from the Anglo-Saxon world, and from French press, local Argentine press, uh, wherever um, the film was uh, reviewed was a very good review, but. Um, yeah, that that's 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 what we were listening at at the moment there. Um, yeah, and and that made us expecting for an award, which because in when I when I was invited to Cannes, I said, okay, the award is to be invited to Cannes. Yes. Um, and when I presented the film, I was very happy with that, and that's it. Uh, once we been receiving all these booze as you said yes. okay we started okay maybe we deserve some award but the jury decided to, <laughs> to award eight films uh but not ours so uh but it's okay i mean it's okay the, the film was invited to, to several festival film festivals every every part in the world um and it was sold also to many territories um i'm very happy really i didn't expect to 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 have a such a success with 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 this film mm. i i i made it, i made this film with any speculation at all i mean i really did what what i wanted to I really made what I wanted to make. It was um, very... So that taps into something that I, I sort of want to assess what's happening with, with cinema from your country right now. So, um, uh, you know, the, the democracy, globalization, inflation, inequality is, is rooted in your country's complicated past and present. It still resonates in larger themes, such as works like yours or Azor, La Flor, Trinky, La Quinn, um, but it's been almost three decades since the mid 1990s. And what all these films represent to me is that there's a renewal in terms of what we wanna see on the screen. Uh, there's a provocation in form. There's a provocation in, with length. There's, there, in your case, I wanna say that you're not, you're, you're taking certain perimeters of genre films, but you're not adhering to it. The delinquent, the delinquents is 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 perhaps the most unsexiest bank heist film of all time. So, are you? Would you say this momentum is? Do you do you feel as if you're part of a a shifting of the paradigm a little bit? I don't know. I really don't know because you mentioned all films that friends of mine, and sometimes I I feel that we okay we were. A small group finally in the context of uh, Argentine film industry, which is quite bigger than 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 us. Um, uh, but anyway, I think Argentine Argentine cinema is. Um, 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 is very rich, diverse, um, powerful. Um, um, and every year you have two or three very good films, two or three very good new filmmakers making films. 
which is something that we we should be proud of that because it's not so common for a country like for a peripheral country like 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 mine you know um at the same time um the situation the, the economic situation is so bad the um, now all all the public support for cinema arts in general are threatened by candidates that that want to crop all the money for not only for arts mm -hmm. one of the of the probable uh, uh, next president want to, to crop public uh, health uh, support education everything so okay we'll see for uh, the screenwriting process i imagine that you could have been writing page 20 at the same time as you're writing page 80 um were, were there uh, is there any truth to that and also was there any faction of the film that was not preconceived beforehand example the score i i had a lot of fun writing this this screenplay um it was like a every every time i i was unfolding the story you know mm -hmm. all the time and it was like it could be endless i can, <laughs> i can keep unfolding this story forever um so i don't know if yeah it could be that i was right it, it looks like if that i i wrote first the page 20 and then page page 80 but it has to do with this this structure you know the, this open structure and where even secondary characters have their time have their moments which i was very um i was very worried about that very aware of having yes. these these moments for for the secondary characters regarding the score is a way of evoking uh, some tr lost tradition in in cinema you know okay. the i think that that um, from 90s on the 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 score of films are become so predictable so boring so uh, um, em emphasizes every feeling every gesture every um that i don't like um, that's why i never uses i never used um, um original uh, score for my films but i i felt in this case i needed to have a dialogue between action dra dra dramatic action and music and i decided not to to have original uh, music for this for this for the film but to use to using pre-existential music that evokes me some i don't know maybe Melville or Chabrol films, mm -hmm. film noirs mm -hmm. uh, from, from the 50s and 60s. Uh, and I found Astor Piazzolla, which is in Argentine music, uh, very, very, very original. And for the first act of the first part of the film, and for the second, uh, part I I found um, some impressionists uh, some impressionist French musicians from 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 the from late nineteenth century and and early twentieth century mm -hmm. uh, and the combination of them makes something more um, it's so much homogeneous it's, whatever you went through an extremely complex shoot what does time away from a living breathing piece what what does that give to you how do these obstructions of real life how does it help you reassess 
art in in in, in real time. I, I will switch to Spanish. Um, no, no es que tuve que reevaluar eh, cuestiones como más eh, relacionadas entre lo que está pasando en el mundo, lo que está pasando en la vida real y lo que está pasando en la película. Más bien, entendí que todo ese periodo tan largo eh, en el que estuvimos filmando la película y en donde en el medio eh, ocurrió lo que ocurrió con una pandemia en todo el mundo, que afectó a todo el mundo, donde mucha gente cercana incluso murió. Eh, más bien lo que hizo fue, no, entonces, no sé si fue tanto como la conexión en ese momento con la, lo que estaba pasando en el mundo, como sacar provecho del de obstáculo, de la dificultad. Y entender que... Eh, lo que filmé en 2022 no lo hubiese podido filmar cuando empecé a filmar en el 2018. Eh, paro aquí y así pues. Perfecto. So it's not that I had to reassess um, because of the world situation or the reality versus what I was shooting in the film. Um, what happened is all the time I was shooting and then in the middle of that uh, pandemic hit and it uh, affected all of us and even people close to me died. So in that moment, what I thought is like, okay, I will take advantage of these difficulties, of these issues. And at the end, what I find is what I shot in 2022 would not have been possible to shoot in 2018. Y lo que pasó ahí entonces fue que eh, la idea de que la escritura, la filmación, o sea, el rodaje y la, y el, la edición estuvieran todo el tiempo conviviendo. Es decir, no es que uno escribe, después filma y después edita, sino que en esta película fue algo que fue sucedáneo, ¿no? fue contemporáneo. Fue todo ese proceso. Y creo que eso es eso que la industria del cine, que a, la, que a la industria del cine le da pánico, creo que es la mejor manera de hacer cine, la mejor manera de hacer películas. Eso en relación a la producción. Después quiero terminar la pregunta con otra cosa. Ok. Y en este film, the idea of the writing and the shooting and the editing afterwards, they all live together. So this is something the film industry is very scared of. And for me, this is the best way to make a film. Mm -hmm. Y para terminar, en relación a, lo que, a, a la pandemia, a mí me parece que ahí la película se resignifica sola, es decir, hoy la, la película se va a estrenar ahora eh, se está mostrando ahora, y ahora el mundo es muy diferente entonces durante la pandemia hubo un comienzo de la pandemia donde todos tuvimos como una especie de chispazo de, de momento, de segundo, de lucidez en donde dijimos, el mundo puede ser mejor, dejamos de trabajar estamos en nuestras casas amasamos pan miramos películas, trabajamos a distancia, está todo bien. Rápidamente el, 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 el orden mundial o, o, el, o el poder mundial reorganizó las cosas para que nada de eso pudiera suceder y lo que, sucede, lo que ten, obtuvimos luego fue un mundo claramente peor, un mundo lleno de odio, lleno de bronca, lleno de rencor, de guerras, de candidatos o de presidentes que promulgan el odio. Entonces, la película que trata sobre la obtención de la libertad, sobre hacerse una pregunta de orden existencial, ¿qué hacemos con nuestro tiempo? Creo que cobra, en este contexto, un valor de... Eh, mucho más eh, fuerte. Mm -hmm. um, so, also about the pandemic, that 
made the the film to to have like a new meaning so the the film is released now and the world is different from before so at the beginning of the pandemic we all saw that the world could be better right so we could we didn't work or we work uh, remotely we were like baking our bread and watching films but then the world reorganized and we had to go back and then uh, we have a, a worse world, that's it. So with a lot of arguments and wars and precedents that only want something to do with hate. And the film talks about freedom, about what we do with our time, which is the existential question. And mm-hmm. I think it gives it more value. But there's a lot of things for the working in this film, but at its core, it's about simple math and economics. Uh, it's about how the dollar bill or Argentina pesos runs our lives. Capitalism and freedom are very strange bedfellows. Um, how would you, a person that's been living in a country that's that has inflation, that that has a very crazy rapport with 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 money, how do you like- think about those those items um, just just from your personal stance? Capitalism and freedom. Bueno, en principio, eh, a mí lo que me pasa es que eh, yo siento que la verdadera libertad tiene que ver con con liberarse de la opresión claramente capitalista. Es decir, un mundo dominado por las empresas, regulado, reglado, ¿no? Ruled por las compañías por las empresas, cada vez más. Entonces, el, el, las personas pasamos a ser una especie de eh, consumidores permanentes, de usuarios, ¿no? La idea del usuario es una idea que se instaló hace no mucho, hace 20 años que hablamos de somos usuarios, ¿no? Username. Somos usuarios, todo el tiempo somos usuarios. Ya no somos espectadores de cine, somos usuarios de Netflix. Entonces, me parece que eh, la, la, la falta de libertad es, es, es total. Entonces, sucede que cuando uno hace una película tratando de desmarcarse de, de, las, de los mandatos o de las, del, del deber ser, ¿no? De lo, de lo que hay que hacer, de cómo se tienen que hacer las cosas, de repente se vuelve este, o, o revolucionario o un ovni in, 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 que, nadie, que nadie entiende. ¿no? Eso por un lado. Ahora pues continúa. Yeah. So I, I feel that the true freedom has to be with getting rid of the capitalist oppression Uh, because everything is ruled by companies and more and more. So people are consumers all the time. They're users. And this is a kind of recent idea. Like it has, what, 20 years? Uh, User name and so on. So we're not like audience or spectators in a movie theater. We are Netflix users. Mm -hmm. So this film trusts tries to get away from what you should do, what you should be. And uh, then it becomes like a revolution or like a UFO that nobody understands. Ahora, en relación concretamente a la situación de de mi país, eh, yo en principio soy una persona privilegiada que hoy está en New York promocionando su película. Es un país que tiene un 50% de pobreza. Cuando yo era niño, la pobreza en Argentina era del 7%. Hoy es del 50%. O sea, es una locura lo que está pasando con la Argentina hace 30 años, 40 años. Al mismo tiempo, esa inestabilidad económica tan grande nos convierte, paradójicamente, en una sociedad un poco más libre de las empresas que lo que yo veo en Europa o en Estados Unidos. Entonces, es posible 
hay algunas cosas para la clase media, sobre todo, que es posible vivir y es posible hacer sin tanto peso del de trabajo y de la efectividad o la productividad. Y eso es porque es un país que está destruido. Entonces, bueno, hay formas de supervivencia que pueden ser más libres. Es una paradoja, pero es así. So, regarding my country, well, I have the privilege to be here in New York promoting the film, but in my country, there's a 50% of poverty. And that's crazy. When I was a kid, it was 7%. Mm -hmm. So this craziness has been going on for 30, 40 years. And at the same time, this uh, situation that is not stable, economically stable, uh, makes us a society that it's a bit more free uh, from the companies. Um, this is what I see in the US or in Europe. And that's a paradox, right? Uh, so it's possible to do many things without the weight of a job or to be like effective all the time. It's kind of, people are kind of more free. So in my books, the most ingenious idea of the film is, um, is how things are manifested and, and, and doubled up with your characters. Uh, one actor plays essentially the same role, uh, Germain de, de Silva. There's the one girlfriend that doubles down. Uh, we have these dual protagonists. Was the notion of duality and the repeated blueprint um, Why was it so crucial to the overlay of your film? Porque eh, hay algo que a mí me interesaba desde el comienzo y que tiene que ver probablemente con ese destino común que es el de Román y el de Morán y cómo el de Román queda un poco atado al destino de Morán. Eh, como que Morán tiene una revelación y él podría robar plata y no tener un, un cómplice. Sin embargo, hay una idea de compartir esa, esa revelación con al menos uno de sus compañeros, con quien probablemente no tenga mucha eh, amistad, mucha relación. Sin embargo, decide este, compartir este plan con él amenazándolo, chantajeándolo, ¿no? Hay, hay, claramente hay un chantaje. Y Román, es decir, la película cuenta finalmente, cuenta dos cosas la película. Por un lado, cómo Román, todo el proceso que hace Román para llegar a la revelación que le propone Morán al comienzo de la película. Eso por un lado. Y por el otro lado, cómo el proceso de Morán es un proceso de desprendimiento. Es decir, es, es alguien que descubre, y eso es, eso es cuando lo a Córdoba, cuando lo a, 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 a la montaña, descubre que otra vida es posible. No la que él se imaginaba, que era simplemente dejar de trabajar. Algo incluso mucho más, mucho mayor que eso. Que otra vida es posible en donde lo que es posible es, como decía antes, el tiempo improductivo. El tiempo improductivo es, eh, es hacer sonidista de un documental, de una película que nadie entiende. El tiempo improductivo es bailar, cantar, leer un poema. Entonces, esos son como los dos recorridos. Pero finalmente llegan, tanto uno como el otro, al mismo lugar. Llegan a la misma conclusión. Es decir, Román finalmente renuncia al banco. Entonces, toda duplicidad en términos narrativos me resultaba, bueno, un juego muy eh, muy interesante de, de, de llevar a, a cabo oh, okay. <laughs> um, so 
the fate of Roman and Moran, well, Roman's fate was kind of um, like to, to Moran's. So Moran at the beginning has kind of a revelation and he could rob the money and he could have no accomplice. Mm. But the idea of sharing, even though they were not that close friends, but the idea of sharing was there, at least with one of his co-workers. Mm -hmm. Of course, he kind of threats him and blackmails him, that's clear. But the, the film tells two things. One is how Roman has this process of revelation when he um, asks Moran at the beginning of the film. And then the second is the process of Moran of letting things go. So when he goes to Cordoba, to the hills, and he finds out that another life is possible and not only not working as he thought at the beginning, uh, not being productive, but something else, something wider. Like he could be um, involved in a documentary no one understands, or he could be reading uh, poems or singing and dancing. So at the end, they both uh, get to the same conclusion. And mm -hmm. that duality, well, I thought it was a very compelling game. Um, it was a great introduction for me to your work, and I look forward to exploring what you did prior to that. So um, enjoy, the, enjoy right. the... Very nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.